Bruh. Well, it's finally here, the finale to my 24-hour MP game where I started as Tungu, moved to Sweden, formed Russia, and made a northern Russian Swedish empire. This is probably going to be the most action-packed part, so let's just jump right into it. Unfortunately, just like in real life, warring for many years can really negatively impact your economy. Thanks to the newly invented fur manufactory, a new business opportunity was opened in my Swedish Russian empire. Yes, the entire time I was building these and I still had loans from the previous war. And I continue to ignore loans for now since these manufacturers when built will triple my production and trade income. This should be it for many manufacturers right now. You might be thinking, is it really better to ignore loans and even take out loans to build these manufacturers? Well, short answer, yes. Long answer, it's simple economics. We can take loans to build our economy, which will in turn enable us to take more loans and bigger sale of crown lens, which will enable to build our economy, which allows us to take even more loans and even bigger sale of titles so we can build our economy. We do pay the interest the entire time, but when will we pay off the loans? Um, just when? It. But let me Shalom. just tell you. Realistically, taking normal loans to build buildings is not worth it unless it's really high manufacturers and universities. Manufacturers, because the rate of return is really high, especially on high value trade goods, since the macro builder only shows the production income, on high value trade goods, you also have to think about the trade income that's coming in from that extra goods produced. Universities, it's worth to build if you have a development cycle coming up, as your monarch points are a very precious resource, and hitting the funny development buttons is OP as shit. And remember, kids, build universities in the provinces that it's the cheapest to dev first. Enough of that technical nation building stuff. Now it was time to do something silly. Are you ready, Zen? If you recall, this entire campaign was played in one sitting in a 24-hour lobby, and we were reaching the last five hours, which means player wars. The Burgundy player who formed Lotharingia into France had just defeated the Spain player and was looking for more wars to fight in, which is when he told me to deck on my neighbor, Yuan, who was also allied to Korea. Why did France want to join this war? Well, because he was bored. War started with French and Russian troops pouring into the steppe, catching Yuan completely by surprise. All of his allies came to his call to aid, but it would be at least a year before they could reach the front line. The first battle that took place was in the heart of Asia, initiated by the Swedish-Russian troops showing the first battle between East and West in this alternate timeline. Despite doing more casualties, I decided to retreat. Not because I was afraid, but simply as a tactic. As a matter of fact, a Mongolian tactic, the feigned retreat. In this current position, there's no way to stop the Yuan and Korean troops from reinforcing. If we baited them into more open land, it gives more opportunities for cutoffs and encirclements. Korea takes the bait and engages France on a province, and we immediately go for the encirclement. Not only did we cut off the first battle, but we also cut off the second battle, engaging in three battles at the same time. Out of the three battles, we only lost one of them, the one in the center. However, their army was completely encircled, so we just re-engaged as soon as we could. The key to this war was speed. Our income was heavily suffering since we were very committed, and not only that, we were very close to firing the court and country disaster while this war was raging on. Luckily for us, we were only a few steps away from the Khan's capital, Korgus. Koreans were ready for us, but again, we encircled their forces, catching off their reinforcements, stopping any hope from Yuan winning the main battle. Defenders tried their best to hold, but due to lack of supplies and reinforcements, their army shattered and we were now sieging the capital of the Khan. With Korgus now sieged, the humiliated Khan unconditionally surrendered to us, meaning we achieved victory. Another victory! Dude, I just got army reform. Yeah. Okay. Wait, uh, not Georgia, sorry. Um, Austria. What's up? Do you want to take like a, you want to fight a one battle against me? Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I haven't reinforced that stack once. Same yeah, morale. Oh, 
Oh, that was so close, actually. Core and country finally over, man. I hate that firing that event in multiplayer. In single player, it's not that bad because you can just go speed five through it. But in multiplayer, it's agony, dude. It's like 10 years of pain, dude. But hey, dude, we're now making money again, even with our 20 ducats of interest. You forgot to encourage dev? No, I didn't even forget to encourage dev. It's not built in, it's not in the mod, dude. We removed it. See? Ah, you backseated and you were wrong. Oh, you know what that means? 24 hour timeout. You broke the rules. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that to you. I what's your know. What's your manpower? What's your max manpower? Kino I got a million. A million. Almost. A million? Almost. You have three times my max manpower, dude. You know right, what? Actually, so I'm down to 1v1. I'm down to 1v1. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I Can any does anyone want to give me money for to help, to help me fight Yuan though? Um, yeah, I'll give you. I'll give you. Yeah. Are you sure? How, How much do you need? Baby? How much? Um, just I need like any money. Uh, like whatever you can spare, I'll take. Uh, I need oh. it to fight Yuan. Wait, 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 wait. I send okay, Yuan yeah. money though. Hey, Yuan looking kind of. After fully recovering from the war and some nice little gifts from our fellow European nations, Yuan and I agreed to a one versus one. No Korea, no France. Here I was going to show on the screen for you guys, the, the YouTube viewers, um, my Twitch chat doubting me. Uh, a lot of people in the chat were saying that this was an impossible war, that I'm just decking stupid war, like I'm going to lose this war. And, uh, you know, the, on paper it looked pretty bad. Yuan had 2.5x my income at this point, as well as three times my manpower. He's also a cavalry nation, which means he's going to do a lot of damage. Since I don't have the chat log anymore, what I'll do instead is recreate the interaction between me and Twitch chat uh, right before this war. Is it really painful? What about when you come up against him? Fight harder, I always have. His speed, his ferocity, his training. I started the war. I made the war goal the enclave of Yuan land inside my land so I would get ticking war score right off the bat. But this time, Yuan was already waiting at my border. First couple battles went my way as we were able to defeat Yuan on the mountains near Perm. But right away, I found the problem that I had was that Yuan had three cannon stacks while I only had two, meaning Yuan could cut off my reinforcements like he did right here. But since he did not have reinforcements, we were able to win the battle on Perm, and we pushed forward. Here's where I made a big mistake. Instead of making that third cannon stack that I knew that I needed, um, I continued to push forward because I was like, oh, I won the battles, I can keep pushing forward which was a big mistake because, as you can see right here, even though we were winning one battle, we lost the second battle due to our reinforcements being picked off, and Yuan was able to stack wipe a couple of my stacks that, were, that had no cannons with them. We fell back, and we made a new line while we waited for my third cannon stack to be ready so we could push again. Yuan made the first move in Kurgan. We were able to cut off his reinforcements and start two other battles. And it was looking good at first. However, we did not have enough troops. Which meant that we lost the battles and we had to retreat. Things were not looking too hot. I had just burnt through all of my professionalism and I had only 500k troops left in my manpower bank. That's when we got it. The 10 discipline event from our discipline advisor. Uh, it is renamed in this mod to Harambe's Blessing, but it is the same one time per game event for 10 discipline, which meant that we had 10 more discipline and we could turn the war. And in the exact same place the war started, we engaged Yuan. The damage we dealt was absolutely devastating. In many cases, we were, won the battle before he could even reinforce with one or two stacks. And we hit him, of course, with another EU4 encirclement.
Just look at the casualty difference. We entered the Asian step again, this time with more reinforcements and three cannon stacks, dealing absolutely devastating damage to the Yuan forces. We were winning the war, however we had one major issue. We were out of army professionalism and we were almost out of manpower. So I decided instead of going for 100% on Yuan to instead enforce through a stab hit. As the last battles of the war raged on, I continued to send more stab hits as Yuan's stability continued to decrease. Uh, reminder, when he hits minus 3 stability, he will automatically accept the peace deal. Yuan continuously increased his stability while taking multiple battles in a way to get more war score. wins he had double my man power dude double, man power. double my man power <laughs> and we won dude and we won we got to fix our country now dude 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 russia moment or yeah russia moment here we go chat after our manpower recovered i was feeling energized enough for another war, which is when I set my eyes on to Georgia, who is allied to Ethiopia. So this would be a one versus two. For this war, I wanted to try something different. So I hired an editor from Fiverr to edit it for me. Hello, Bozo. Certified hood classic. I always spank my dad. Who's your daddy? Before you get angry at me for snaking a player like that in a 24-hour lobby, just keep in mind the player said that he was going to leave after that war. So I was like, okay, it's going to be an AI anyways, might as well just snake it. It was a really fast war. We basically blitzed him um, and stack wiped so much that the war was very quick. There was one last war. It was a world war between East and West. However, since the East players have been playing on their nations since the beginning, they were generally stronger and they had almost double our troops, uh, which is the reason why I'm not going to make it part of the video. I'll show you one clip um, of a big play that we made. But yeah, they just had way too many troops and it was just uneven. And at this point in the last hour, I was just completely zooted. All right. He's coming. Get back. Fall back. Ireland, fall back. Two tiles. Fall back. Two tiles. Everything. Fall back. Two tiles. All right. We, we have to get catch them on the great offensive. On this great offensive. Listen. We have to catch them completely off guard. I'm going to try to shut down on a bunch of reinforcement stacks. Microing. And we're going to need to just basically just keep fall back. Keep falling back. We're going to cut them off. And we're going to stack wipe everything. Okay? You know what I want to do? Yep. We're going to cut. I'm going to cut down. We're going to stack wipe everything. And then we're going to win the war. That's our hope. Um, I need hey. this next tech, though. Let him go into Poland. Here. Poland, you ready? You took out your max loans, right? Who's Poland? Ruthenia, you took out max loans already, yeah, right? I'm max loans. I'm max. Okay, then uh, just fall back. Let them go inside you. Let them come inside you. I'll, I'll let them penetrate me. I'll let them penetrate okay, and you guys, guys, down. I wish I could draw an arrow. From Tula down to Crimea. That's the move. Yeah, inside going on. They yeah. will get, they will get the, what do you call it? They, we can stack wipe them because they'll get the one province retreat because Georgia is not in the war. We're going down. Let's go.
We are encircling them. We're encircling them. Keep running at them. Despite sack wiping almost a million troops in Moldova, it was not enough to turn the war simply because they had almost double our numbers. Um, and not only that, Punjab cut me off in Finland, meaning I could no longer reinforce my allies in Lithuania. Anyways though, that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, unfortunately, at this point, we started having desync issues and instead of rehosting with 30 minutes left, we just ended up calling it and calling the game. And yeah, that's it. That's it for the series. That's it for the video. Um, and if you want to support me, um, subscribe, uh, really uh, like this, share this it would really support me a lot. Um, and you can also check me out on Twitch, uh, where I stream very often. Um, and uh, yeah, and also thank you for your patience on this video. If you're wondering why this video took so long. I ended up scratching this video. I made it completely and then I ended up scratching it because I didn't like the video that I made. Um, I watched it and I was like, no, I could definitely do a lot better for this finale. And I feel like I did. Um, and not only that, I ended up taking an online course for editing um, so I could get better at editing and I could produce higher quality content because that is my goal. Not to just post you know, videos, um, but to post good videos. Anyways. That's it, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.